Oh, dang. Wow, my alarm literally went off right when I started the video. I woke up way before work this morning. Um, but anyways, on to the video. So um, this video is about basically, I think there's a lot of advice on YouTube and the internet when it comes to like programming um, that's just straight out bad. And some of the advice like, that's not even like random people, but seems to be coming from bigger like companies, maybe like Google, Facebook or whatever, just seems outright bad. Um, one of the things I would say is keep it simple, stupid. And when I say that, you're probably already disagreeing with me. Like, of course you want to keep it simple. And I would say... Yes, sometimes, because oversimplifying is also bad. Some things aren't as simple as they, like, if you make something too simple, you might be taking away a lot of things that you need. Some things just aren't simple. So uh, keeping it simple, stupid, doesn't make a whole lot of sense in you know, some situations, um, it, it really depends on what you're working on. Now, when, when I think of keep it simple, stupid, I think of people, of when you're using a lot of different libraries and tools other people have made, you know, to help you out with the project you're working on. Right. Um, but if you're doing more of a from scratch approach, it seems like keep it simple, stupid, doesn't always apply. And then another misconception I see is um, you want dry code. And of course, you want dry code, right? Um, you want, well, don't repeat yourself. Yeah, you don't want to, of course, you want dry code. You want to not repeat, to repeat um, the same thing over and over again. But when you initially start making something, you can't always start off with dry code. Sometimes, you know, looking over iterations and thinking about how an iteration is going to be isn't always going to be straightforward. So sometimes repeating yourself initially is helpful just to see like what things, you know, what's going to happen. And then going back into it and cleaning it up and then maybe, you know, breaking down what you wrote into, you know, functions or it, uh, loops or some type of iteration, you know, might help. But the thing is, is um, the problem with trying to write dry code from the scratch is that uh, I'm just going to give you an example. Uh, let's say you're doing A, B, and C, tasks A, B, and C, right? Like, okay, one iteration might be A, B, C, right? Next iteration might be A, B, um, D, C, right? Next iteration is A, then um, A, um, so like A, and then there's like a little time, like A subsection one, B, F, C, right? Or then the next iteration might be A, B, L, right? And it's like each iteration is somewhat similar, but there, I mean, that sounds like a terrible explanation, but each iteration, what I'm trying to get at is each iteration is somewhat similar, but like it keeps changing and the changes are so, um, how do I put it? so varied that it, you can't see it with when you're just writing the loop itself and it's it's very hard to see um and then along with that is just a bad misconception is object oriented programming just in general it the more i steer away i mean i feel like it's preference but the more i steer away from object oriented programming it seems that i become a better programmer myself um the way you have to organize data 
changes a lot. The way you organize your code changes a lot when you veer away from object-oriented programming. But like for me, it I literally like with keeping these things that I'm telling you, I write in C, right? <laughs> I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because I rather write in C. Uh, just my language of choice. And it takes a lot longer to do things. But guess what? Like over this like recent like year, right? I, I'm going to say around a year. I've run into less seg faults and bugs than like ever before. Like I, if I do run into a seg fault, I'll fix it like that. Um, it's just about coming up with a good pair, like system to your, your code writing, keeping it very clean and organized, always refactoring. Um, and just, um, how do I put it? Being like mindful of what you're doing. Um, I've been trying to a little bit, I mean, I'm not, I'm not nowhere near an expert in data oriented design. I'm probably like the I have a very minimal understanding, but I'm going to say that just the minimal understanding I have has helped a lot as well. Um, and another misconception <laughs> is that um, these newer, I mean, this is pure opinion, but these newer languages are better. And the problem with these newer programming languages is I've learned a lot of programming languages. I'm not going to lie, but I never really stick with any of them. And I always keep going back to C and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why it's all these languages. They want you to learn more and more and more about the language and you learn less and you, you practice less and less actual like coding and programming. You just learn the language. Oh, if I do a uh, dot for each at the end, then it's going to loop through everything. Right. But you, or if I do dot or this method, it's going to do this for me. And, or if I do dot uh, to upper, it's going to put everything to uppercase. Right. And learning all those little methods, it takes so much time. Right. Whereas in C, there isn't always those little methods that like just come with the language or the libraries. I'm sorry, with the library and the language. I mean, somewhat, obviously there is the standard, there's a standard library, but you know, um, but just being able to have that limitation of like not as complex of a language, it makes you more focused on just writing the code than trying to make sure the syntax and language is right. I hate C++ with a passion because of that. There is so much intricacy in the language, like when it comes to like templates and when it comes to, um, uh, what is it called? I don't even know. Like the thing where you write a class and it, you can change the class later. Uh, I don't know what it's like. I honestly don't know, but there's so much to see so much syntactically so much like it's just a headache. It's too much. And when you write and see, it's you you just focus, hone in on what you just have to do. Um, but with that in mind, I've been starting to work on a game. I literally kind of like copied. I took all the sprites and the map sets right from. I literally pulled it from the game using like Visual Boy, which I'll probably have to change. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo would get mad at me if I kept it and I tried selling this, but it's just a simple, um, like the damage calculation is correct. I just got it from like Bulbapedia and I can like go through the different Pokemon I have and like sw switch. Um, I know there's no shifting, but whatever is in, whatever is your lead Pokemon will be go, we'll go out there. See, look at someone or if I can change to this person or a nice, I don't know why I called them these names. And then if I, the attacks, right. The, the player doesn't attack, but I mean, I do. That's about it. <laughs> Not extremely complicated. And it switches to, it decides like, see this right here. It goes through all of the attacks that um, each one of the 
opponent's Pokemon have, and it f f picks the one that does the most damage, and then from the well, and it decides out of all of the Pokemon that so it picks the 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 move that does the most damage, and then it finds that it's just like okay, well this the, the move that does the most damage in the, for the Pokemon nobody is uh, the most damage that this Pokemon could do to my Pokemon is you know thirteen, and then with this Pokemon lol well. <laughs> The most damage it could do is 11 to me and then with many the most damage it could do would be 11 so out of all these right um it decided that it would be better to throw out this pokemon because it can do the most damage which is at the index of i think it was at one because yeah so it it like it's a very simple ai like not comp like i could you know make it a little better but it does the job right now um boom i'm just trying to sh sh show off the game works like let me i guess i have to switch pokemon because honestly i just chose like a random amount of pp and like i feel like all the moves don't have the right power points i just put in random stuff for power points and all that Seems to be that I've run out of PP for a lot of moves. I just do that. There we go. So you know, I went back to the main game or whatever. This is just basically like a state machine, like most games. Um, and it has a map. I have a map editor built for it too. Like you know, it's nothing crazy. I need to work on it a little bit more and make it a little better, but so far you, you can just sort through different things you want to add to the map like this. Boom, let's say I want to add this to the map. Bada bing, bada boom, save it. Uh, boom, it's saved. When I rerun the game. Uh, unfortunately, I have to get through this guy because, I mean, I could go through the code and change it to where it doesn't start up right here. I just made the game start right here because I was working on this, this battle thing. But yep, you can tell that now that I went in the map editor and added that bookshelf that it's there. Um, so that's some basic functionality. But honestly, I've been working on this game quick. I mean, not quick. It's taken me a while. Like, I've worked on it for, like, quite a few months now but it's like I'm literally stripping away all of the advice not all of the advice but some of the advice that like I hear all the time and it's actually improved <laughs> what I'm doing um so yeah that's just a little little bit of st stuff I just want to add and talk about um yeah um I'd suggest just if you want to get better just try um focusing more on programming and creating things than you do on the language <laughs> that you're writing in uh honestly the language really doesn't matter it just keep working on stuff um and then with that um I don't know, just keep, I, I guess that's as simple as I can put it, just keep working on stuff. But, um, I don't know if that's all I want to talk about. I think so. I think that's all I really wanted to say for today. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah. Um, oh, one other thing also along with that, um, Get used to debugging. Uh, debuggers are your friend. If you want to get better, try learning more about them and just how to run through um, your code with debuggers. Um, I guess I can go. I started thinking about something right when I was about to end the video. When it comes to like fixing Zeg faults and um, other issues like that, um, I just found it easy to. 
make sure to like clean up your process and how you allocate and deallocate memory. I think I'm saying the right words for that. If I'm not, uh, whatever. <laughs> but basically, kind of like what I do is I'll make a function, right? An init function for whatever I'm making that, okay, so this is like for the menu, like menu init, right? Then I'll have another function called menu update, right? Then I'll have another function called menu free. Well, menu init um, usually will allocate the memory I need. And then memory update, I mean, menu init, yeah, will allocate any memory I need if it needs to be on the stack. Then menu update will um, just keep updating and redrawing to the screen or whatever it needs to do any type of updates it needs to do for the game. And then the free will just uh, deallocate anything it initially allocated. And that's all I really do for like most of the things in the game is just <laughs> init, update, and then free. You don't always need a free, but sometimes you do. Um, yeah, and then I keep basically like when it comes, I kind of work, so my class, Classes, as far as for me in C, there isn't classes, but I I use um, a header files as classes. So all the related functions, right? Let's say if it's just about um, like the UI, right? If I just have like a header file just for the UI, then I keep every everything for the UI, obviously, in the header file. And that's basically kind of like a class already. And um, right, I'll put UI underscore and then whatever the function does right so that 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 will signify that hey this is part of the ui when when i have that ui part in the front of the function or whatever it might be um and then if you want something only local to that quote unquote class or header file you put static in front of the function and then you can't access it access it outside of that header file um, which, you know, helps a lot. And then, yeah. Um, but I don't know. All right. I'll stop ranting. I mean, so that's the advice I give to programmers. <laughs> All right.